you have now joined up with several different prosecutors in the Bay Area to try to crack down on this wave of organized retail crime. Tell us what you're seeing. Well, we're seeing something that we have not seen over the years, and that is large groups, really a mob, that charges into these stores to the retail, both the big stores and the mom and pop stores, and tries to clean them out in a matter of one or two minutes and then be on the road. And literally, they had in San Francisco in November, they had 80 people going to Union Square stores. Walnut Creek, they had 70 to 80 people charging in. That's new for us. And it's not just happenstance. It's not just a group who say, let's go do this. It's organized. And that's what we have to respond to in law enforcement and in prosecution. So, uh, you know, there was obviously an uptick around Thanksgiving. We are now four days before Christmas. As you point out, this has been going on for a while now. And I understand that you, uh, your office recently announced one of the largest retail theft busts in California history. So are you saying these are all organized, they're not sort of crimes of opportunity, not sort of spontaneous things that are just happening? It falls into two categories. The first category is, um, and neither one is spontaneous. It's just a matter of how well planned it is. On one side, you have the case that you just referred to. That was very well organized. That had gone on. It was, it truly was a uh, criminal enterprise, structured and long lasting. But in addition to that, what we saw in November and we've seen in December is the sort of, again, I use the phrase mobs charging into stores. It's organized in that it's a group putting together and then sending out the word, hey, we're going to go do this. And people just flock in. So I would call it in the middle. It's, um, it's not like a sideshow where it just happens to be Friday night and people show up to see the cars spin around. It's more than that. License plates are being covered up. They are looking for law enforcement with their cell phones and exchanging information where officers are located. And then they're charging in with the knowledge that they want to be in and out within one to two minutes so that the police cannot respond in a timely fashion. That is, again, it's not, it's not the mob, but it's fairly organized. I spoke with the CEO of The Real Real, one of the stores that has been targeted in the Bay Area. Take a listen to what she had to say. We've been hit by mob robbery, and that, um, and it's a serious problem. It's a serious problem in the state of California. It's happened to us in New York. Um, and it, this is not a police problem. This is a problem with criminals are not being prosecuted for retail or property crimes. It is a serious problem. Is that the reality, Stephen? Is that why these keep happening? No, I don't think so. Maybe I think there may be that image out there, depending on what county that you're in. I know in my county, we're renowned. We prosecute everything. I know uh, where Real Real was hit in Palo Alto, Santa Clara County District Attorney prosecutes these cases. And now we've all agreed here in the Bay Area, all of our Bay Area County DAs, we've joined together, we've formed a committee, and we've agreed we need to work together to aggressively prosecute these people. We're distinguishing these criminals from your person who goes in, commits a theft, loads up a basket with stuff to sell it to try and feed uh, an addiction, a drug addiction or something like that. Those are the people we want to help. That's not what we're seeing here in November and December. We're seeing people that are doing it for pure profit motive. They're essentially looting these stores and they need to be prosecuted. And every one of us, no matter what our DA philosophy is in the individual county, we all agree we need to aggressively prosecute these people, treat them for what they were, are, just profit mongers. They're not there to try and uh, feed a habit. They're trying to uh, just make money on it. And for that, there's no leniency, as was noted earlier. For us in San Mateo County, we're asking our judges, we're going to hold them accountable, and we want them punished. Are you seeing these attacks being organized via social media? And if so, what platforms? Uh, you know what? It'll vary as to the platform. I don't want to go too much into that because we don't want the criminals to know exactly what we're watching. But yes, there's an enormous amount of social media exchanges to what goes on. And it follows up with what happens after the theft. These, these thieves do not just take 10 Louis Vuitton purses to hand off to their friends at Christmas. They're doing it to sell defenses. They're putting it out there. And that's the other thing law enforcement and prosecutors are doing. We're going to find the fences and we're really going to hammer down on them because if you cut them off, 
then there's no uh, source for the people doing the thefts to sell their goods. And those, that's a tactic we've also agreed as a group to try and attack this problem. Well, in that case, if these are being organized via social media, do you think the platform should be doing more to crack down? I mean, is there anything that can be done to hold them accountable? Well, there is, I think, uh, particularly in terms of assisting. And I think they want to. We, I know law enforcement, our law enforcement community here in the San Francisco Bay Area has had uh, discussions and on planning meetings with the head of these uh, social platform groups to try and get their assistance. And I am told that they are more than willing to offer whatever help they can because they recognize the problem and they don't want to be a vehicle for crime. And uh, I think we're going to have some positive outcomes on that as we move forward here.